What is going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. We have finally reached the time to start the National Bank Open 2021 and I'm super excited. If you guys haven't watched the channel before or didn't know that I was from Toronto, well now you do. Um, so over the course of the next week or so, I'm going to be going to a bunch of matches. Super excited for that. Um, but in terms of the video today, we're going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about the tournament, a lot of the notable news. We'll be breaking down the top 10 seeds in this draw and just some overall players and sleepers that you guys should be looking out for over the course of the next week or so. Just before we do get into the video though, just a slight note on the tournament, it is no longer called the Rogers Cup, which has caused a little bit of confusion in terms of the names. Um, 2019 and beforehand, again, Rogers Cup, now in 2021, undergone a name change, it's now the National Bank Open. Unfortunately, also some withdrawals from the tournament in some upper end players, Dominic Team, David Goffin, Roger Federer, Vavrinka, all out with injury related concerns. Zverev, Karenio Busta, Djokovic, after their runs in the Olympics are out due to rest out this week. Zverev, of course, won gold, Karenio Busta won bronze, and Novak Djokovic still played uh, the full amount of matches, losing in that bronze medal game as well. And unfortunately, Berrettini and the hometown Raonic also out of the tournament. That being said, something to look out for, Nick Kyrgios did get a wildcard entry into the draw. But anyways, let's move on, look at the top 10 seeds, obviously with Novak Djokovic out. Uh, Medvedev is going to be the top seed. He was the runner-up in the tournament back in 2019, but is going to be looking to bounce back after a bit of a rough stretch. Uh, Quarterfinal exit in the Olympics and around a 16 exit um, in Wimbledon and really struggled throughout the clay and grass seasons. Uh, Medvedev's best surface is, of course, the hard court, so he's going to like playing in Toronto uh, as usual and overall had a very solid start to the hard court season in the early part of 2021. Now, Medvedev is so good because he's an all-around player. Um, got a very good backhand, very good first serve, an overall solid return game. Uh, but I think for him to be able to make a deep run into this tournament and potentially win the entire tournament this year, uh, my main concern or, or thing that I would have to say is you've got to have an increased win percentage behind that second serve, fallen below 50% uh, in some of his previous matches and maybe a little more consistency at the net. But of course, I think Medvedev being the top seed is going to be one of the favorites to win the tournament um, and does have a great shot to win it all. Number two, Rafa Nadal coming off a bit of a tough week in Washington, lost his second round match in three sets to Lloyd Harris, but I do call, uh, cut him a bit of slack after missing Wimbledon and the Olympics, so potentially lacking a little bit of match fitness. Um, Nadal's going to like his chances to bounce back though, not just because there's no Novak in this tournament this week, um, but he's won the tournament a total of five times and actually comes in as a back-to-back -back champion after winning it in 2019 and 2018. Nadal has also recently performed very well in North American events. He's actually won four of the last seven uh, tournaments that he has played in North America. Um, but again, I would love for Nadal to make a deep run into this tournament. Even though he's a very mentally tough player, I would like him to gain some momentum, some confidence heading into what should be a very historic U.S. Open between him and Novak. Um, number three um, is CT Pass. Again, put, it, put together a very strong first half of the 2021 campaign. Um, and given some of the hiccups uh, that he's had recently, actually still remains the ATP Tour year-to-date wins leader this year. However, again, um, had a very good run uh, making it within a set of winning the French Open, but after that has posted a 4-4 four and four record uh, post-French Open, including a first round exit at Wimbledon and a third round exit at the Olympics. But what's really impressive about CT Pass overall this year is the, the, the development of his game as a whole um, is super impressive. He's asserted himself as one of the most effective servers on tour and overall his game, uh, his mentality, I think overall, he's just a lot more rounded. Um, so I expect him to definitely over the course of this hardcore season, uh, be able to bounce back and really find his stride again. Number four is Rublev, um, another guy in the midst of a very solid 2021 campaign. He actually ranks third on tour in wins this year, uh, only behind Tsitsipas and Djokovic. So, I mean, he, he 
he's winning tennis matches. He's got a lot of potential on the hard course. He's got a solid attacking style, really solid play from the baseline. The big thing for Rublev, though, is finding consistency in those bigger tournaments. And, you know, most of his success has come in 500-type tournaments, hasn't really broken through in slams or 1,000 tournaments. So I think if you're looking for one player who you really want to sort of break through in these bigger tournaments, um, really in the upcoming months, Rublev has to be um, right at the top of your list. Number five, Denis Shapovalov. This is my player to watch in the tournament for sure. In the midst of playing some great tennis in 2021, also has the home crowd behind him. So that's something, you know, him being Canadian, playing in Canada, you definitely got to look out for that. Most recent tournament, he lost uh, first round in clay. Also note that he didn't play in the Olympics. So um, early on in the tournament, going to be a test um, in terms of how rusty he is and how quickly he can shake off that rust. Um, but about a month ago, playing the best tennis of his career, he made two semifinals appearances and one finals appearance in three of his last five tournaments that he's played. Of course, coming off that great run to the Wimbledon semifinals. Um, so again, definitely hitting a stride this year. Chapo, of course, um, a strong hitter, plays on momentum and plays with confidence. So um, having those fans behind him, definitely going to work in the favor of Denis Shapovalov. And I think he's definitely a player who could sneak in a deep run into this tournament. Kaspar Ruud is the next guy, comes into the tournament on a 12-match win streak, actually won three ATP 250 titles in a row. Much like Rublev, that's who I sort of compare him to, is a very solid attacking player, um, a really solid baseline player as well, um, and another player who's yet to find consistency in slams or 1,000s. Never made it past the fourth round in a Grand Slam, and just overall, I think the biggest thing for him is gaining more and more experience in these big tournaments. Her catch is next up. One of my favorite players on the tour um, and what a season he has had and, and just overall one of my favorite players to watch. He's a great server, one of the best players that you'll see on tour at the net. And, you know, he, he comes from a very heavy doubles playing background. So that's, you know, what he's used to improve at the net. Um, but what that allows him to do is give players some different looks that normally they wouldn't see. And he really is a different player than a lot of guys on tour. Um, really similar to some of the other guys that we've talked about and are going to talk about in the top 10 is her catch is very streaky. Um, even though he made the semifinals at Wimbledon, he has gone on some bigger match losing streaks and is coming off a second round exit at the Olympics. Um, I think look for her catch here to bounce back a bit. Honestly, I would genuinely, genuinely consider him a dark horse to make the semis, even the finals in this tournament. Um, so definitely look out for him over the course of the next week. Next up, we have Diego Schwartzman been very solid for several years now but has really struggled to gain consistency in 2021 and really just overall string together late runs into tournaments however Diego Schwartzman is a very intriguing player and although he might not be one of the top or strongest hitters on tour he can definitely cover the court and still find ways to dominate rallies and that's why you know Diego Schwartzman often can be a, a super super interesting player to watch next up Felix Oje Aliassime Seemed to be hitting a stride on the grass courts, had a, some great runs in tournaments leading up to Wimbledon, had wins against some very solid top players as well, but has struggled as of late and has only gone one and two since Wimbledon. He's a very technically sound player. He has a good forehand and at times can be lights out on serve. Unfortunately, being a tad inconsistent and the big thing that's looming over uh, the head of Felix Oje Aliassime still remains 0-8 in finals on the tour um, but I definitely think if you point to one tournament that could be a breakthrough for Oje Aliassime this is it just like Denis Shapovalov Felix Oje Aliassime is of course Canadian has the crowd behind him um, and definitely can't hurt um, so look out for Oje Aliassime over the course of the next week Next up is Roberto Batista Agut. Had a fairly strong campaign so far this year, but hasn't played to the standard of a top 10 player and has really struggled against upper end opponents and higher ranked opponents. He does have a very good forehand. He's fast, he's mobile, but he has struggled at times on serve. The main thing with him, like a lot of other players, is his consistency. Uh, but surprisingly, hard court has tended to be his best surface and maybe not over the course of his career, but he's done very good on the hard courts this year. Um, so 2021, it's definitely been his surface. So um, Batista Goot might be a player, um, a seeded player to sort of sneak out a deep run in the tournament. Um, I look out for him. Moving on from the top 10 guys, I got three more people that I think are, are sleepers, guys who could definitely make uh, some noise, some deeper runs. First one is Hachinov. When you think of Russian tennis, and this is why I love Hachinov, 
um, is he's not really the first Russian name that comes to your mind. And he's actually the fourth ranked Russian on the ATP tour behind Medvedev, Rublev, and Karatsev. But Hatchinov has quietly put together a very good hard court season. He actually ranks 11th year to date in wins on the ATP tour. And of course, coming off that silver medal in the Olympics where he lost in the gold medal match to Zverev. Um, he's got a good serve, solid baseline game, definitely a player who I'd expect to continue to break out. Um, and I think the late part of 2021 and the rest of this hard court season um, is definitely a great chance for him to do that. John Isner, um, a name that always seems to come up when it's hard court season and really rightfully so. Now at the beginning of the year, he did lack some match fitness, but 1000% has hit a stride right now and is in the midst of a year where he's 11 and four on the hard court surface, including a win a week ago at the Atlanta Open. So playing some really good tennis. Now again, John Isner on the hard court. I don't know if you could call it a sleeper because it's sort of expected that he's solid right now, just given how electrifying that serve is. Um, but he might be flying under some radars right now. Again, could definitely be a sleeper given the lack of matches that he's played, um, but hit a stride in this past month or so. Some real, real solid matches that I've seen from him. Last one, I like Ugo Umber, um, putting together a very solid 2021 campaign. Had a very solid grass season that included a title victory, but he did lose first round at Wimbledon. Um, he did play in the Olympics. He lost in the quarterfinals in a tough Tough fought match against Hachinov, but also had a very nice win over Tsitsipas. Pass. He's somebody that I'm really wait, waiting to break through at these larger tournaments. Again, he's been solid at some of the smaller tournaments, um, but I think given the quality of his serve, quality of his forehand, overall quality, um, and his ability to attack the ball, I think that he's uh, once again going to be able to thrive on the hard courts. Look out for Umber. Um, but anyways, guys, that's all for today. If you did make it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, comments, predictions on anything that I talked about today and for what you guys expect on this upcoming National Bank Tournament. Um, but if you guys did enjoy today's video, please do me a huge favor, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more tennis content just like this. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys again next time.